In this video, we're going to take a look at the steps to actually find the Taylor series representation of a function. So now we already know the definition of a Taylor series. It's like a Taylor polynomial, but you have infinitely many terms. Instead of a polynomial that stops at a finite degree, you add on more terms and more terms and more terms. You actually let that sum go towards infinity. So now you look at this and you say, well, Devin, why do I need steps? The, the, you know, this is it. You know, your function is represented by this guy. Well, there's, there's one small hiccup in this guy. See, the terms, the n factorial will always be n factorial. There's nothing that we will ever do to change that. That'll always be an all Taylor series. The x minus c to the n will always look like x minus c to the n. The thing that, that's not consistent is this nth derivative of f evaluated at c. See, if, if you wanted this written in a general way, we just don't have that. If you, you know, if you wanted to know the tenth derivative of some random function evaluated at pi over two, you would actually have to take 10 derivatives and then plug in pi over two. Immediately, we don't see any patterns here for this numerator here. So here I've got three steps I'm gonna share with you that'll explain how you find a Taylor series representation of a function like f of x. All right, so the first thing we do is we actually take our function and we, by hand, take just a few derivatives, not a hundred derivatives, but, you know, maybe five, you know, th four or five, six, some, something like that. Take a few derivatives of the function, list them out on some scratch paper, and evaluate them at C, right? So you're going to find F, F prime, F double prime, F triple prime, etc., and plug in C into all those. Now, what you hope will happen is you'll be able to find some pattern. If you might, uh, you might recall when we studied sequences some time ago, one of the things that we uh, often do with sequences is we'll write out a sequence or maybe on a test or a homework assignment will be provided a sequence and then we have to find the pattern for that guy. It's basically the same thing. We're gonna look at the original function evaluated at C and the derivative and the second derivative and the third derivative and the fourth derivative all evaluated at C and, and see if we can find some sort of pattern there that depends on N so that if we wanted the you know 30th derivative of F evaluated at C, we don't want to actually find 30 derivatives. We want to find some standalone formula that uh, that will just be you know, eight, so, so that we're able just to plug in 30, for example. And the only way we can do that is by finding a pattern throughout the first two terms that will hopefully carry on for the remainder of the terms. So now what's this pattern going to look like? Well, the n factorial will always be n factorial. The x minus c to the n will always be x minus c to the n. I, I mentioned that earlier. The only thing that's going to change is going to be this numerator. That's where you're looking at step one and looking at the first few derivatives and trying to find a pattern. So if you can do that, then, then we're basically done. We can now write the function as a power series, right? We write it as a sum, n equals zero to infinity. Our pattern that we discovered in the numerator over n factorial times x minus c to the n, but we're not quite done. That is the Taylor series representation of the function, but it's always also a good idea to find that um, Taylor series radius of convergence and interval of convergence, typically using something like the ratio test. So anyways, that's how we, uh, that's the steps that we use to find the Taylor series representation for a function. So in the next videos, we'll actually go through and we'll work out a few uh, Taylor series for some popular functions.